So warm up here. So I need everyone to grab your stick. You do not need to wear your gloves. If you want to, you can. Okay, so let's grab our sticks here. If it's getting a bit glitchy, you can just take off the Wi-Fi. Everybody's well, got your stick. Okay. Um, now, depending where you are, if you're in your house, okay, and your ceilings aren't very tall, you may need to go down on one knee here or both knees. You can sit back on your heels a little bit. Okay, my garage is not that tall, so I would hit the ceiling doing the uh, for most of them. Uh, and make your parents mad. Over here, so it's a little bit. So first one we're going to do what? is add a piece. You're going to take your foot and you're going to put it out into the no, wait. Okay. You're not on mute. Right? Now, from here, you guys can't really see the blade of my stick. So I'm going to move the blade of my stick by turning my wrist as fast as I can. Everybody try that. Ready? Stick up towards the ceiling. Okay. If you're hitting the ceiling, just move over on the shaft so we don't uh, redecorate the house when no one's there to see it. Can't blame your brother or sister. All right, and then stop. Oh, you part again. Okay, the point here is to get the blade flipping back and forth as quick as possible. Obviously, with the COVID-19 cases across Canada now, we have done that. Let me show you again. Okay, I'm just poking up on it so I don't hit the ceiling. You guys ready? We're going to go for 10 seconds. On your marks. And set, as many as you can. Go. Quick, quick, quick. Let's take more of this. Quick. Roll that wrist, roll that wrist, back and forth. That is actually coping quite well. So All right. Let's start with that. So, next one we're going to do, guys. I'm going to stand up here for me. I'm on the two here. We're going to do some wrist rolls. So, together in front of you. But it is fundamentally. If you roll the same way you can do it. So, we're going to apply that slowly. You can see from the side here, I'm not kayaking, I'm not using my elbows. I'm just moving through my wrists. Okay, so I'm gonna stay from the side here. Okay, we're gonna go 15 times forward. Okay, I'm gonna count. All right, so I'm gonna do my blade around. That's one. Okay, you guys can watch me or you can watch your own stick. Keep your stick nice and even at shoulder height. Ready, set, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. Whew. Okay, I haven't played hockey in a while. You guys have all been playing. You should be able to keep up with me. Don't worry if you can't keep up with me. Okay, but that's how quickly we want to go. Okay, keeping that stick nice and level. Now, same thing, we're going to roll the stick backwards. So now the blade, you can see from the side, is rolling back towards me. Okay, sticks up, shoulder height, knees bent. Everyone ready? We're doing 15 again. On your marks, get set, go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right, now we're going to do a little bit of a challenging one. It's called a stick flip. So, this is going to take a little bit of space east west for you guys. So, if I try to do this next exercise in my garage right here, I'm going to smash into the ceiling. So, I'm going to do it from the side. Okay, but basically, what you're going to see here. Okay, because I've got my stick in one hand. Okay, my palm is facing down, and I'm slowly going to turn the stick, keeping my arm straight until it drops down on the other side. I just hit the side of the brush. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see me here. Okay, I'm going to turn the stick, flip it over, and control. So I'll show you from the side. My palm is down. Okay, if you don't want to hit your ceiling, just choke up. So you're going to go here and flip. Control and flip. Okay, I can watch myself, so I need to keep my arm out a bit more. And I'm just doing the movement through my wrist, going back and forth, bringing the stick back to parallel. Let's keep going here. We're gonna do a couple more on each side. Okay, nice and slow and controlled. This isn't a speed exercise, guys. Keep it nice and controlled. Okay, keep that arm nice up in parallel. Let's do one more in each direction, slow to parallel. Flip it back over to parallel. All right. Now, you'll notice we're just doing our top hand. So for me, I'm a righty. I'm just doing my left hand. Okay. Um, that's our focus for today because we're going to work a lot of stick handling. You can obviously do it on both hands. 
uh, but we're not going to do that today for our warm up. Now, last thing we're going to do is call the throwdown. So please do not put a hole in the ceiling or the floor. Okay, if you're outside or in the garage, you don't have to worry about it as much, I guess. So here's how it's going to look. Okay, you're going to grab your stick down by the butt end if you have space above you. If you don't, choke up a little bit. It makes the exercise a little easier. Okay, what I want you to do is you're going to try to throw your stick to the ground as hard as you can without hitting the ground. So we don't want to hear this. It's not that I can hear you guys. Okay, but you get the idea, right? So I'm going to try and throw it down as hard as I can without hitting the stick or hitting the ground. And you might make a weird face. Don't worry, I can't really see you. I can see me. So again, if you look at my wrist while I'm doing this, guys, right? I'm not sagging my wrist at the bottom and having all limp here, okay? I'm keeping most of the tension through my forearm as I throw down, throw down, throw down. All right, everyone gets the idea? Now, we're gonna challenge ourselves. I want you to throw down as hard as you can, okay? Try not to hit the ground. We're gonna do 10 in a row, okay? So sticks up. Again, if you don't have a lot of space, you can choke up and just throw down from there, but it's up to you guys. You can also do this down on one knee if you need a little bit more space. Are we ready? We're gonna do it together. On your marks, get set, one, two, Three, four, five, don't hit the ground. Six, seven, eight, your hands on the button. Last one and ten. All right. Now, nice and warm up here. Yeah, get outside. Okay. Cool. Who just jumped on. Welcome. Okay, let's make sure Thank guys. You. Okay, so mute yourself. I should be the only one who's got their volume on right now. So hopefully everyone can hear me. Okay, you should be able to hear me, just mute yourself so that we don't have a lot of feedback here. All right, so next thing we're gonna do, again, grab your gloves if you want them. If you don't want them, you can use your hands. So, we're gonna work on two things. We're gonna work on our action when we're stick handling and we're gonna work on our spacing. So, our action when we're stick handling. Okay, everyone can see my top hand here. Okay, my wrist back and forth. You can probably see it better. I put on one of my tiny gloves. One of us gloves are smaller. So you see me here, okay? That's my top hand going back and forth. So if you guys can try that, bring your top hand back and forth, back and forth. And you can't really see my blade right now, so I'll move back. Oh, wait a minute. So you can see my shape flipping back and forth. Here or else it's going to get real loud in a second. But what I want you guys to do, okay, just to warm up that hand, is I'm going to flip that fish over. Okay, I'm going to go nice and quick here for 10 seconds. Ready? On your marks, get set, go. One. Two. One. Two. So again, without my annoying stick in my hand, you can see the action on my hand. So whether I'm stick handling in front of me, Okay, in front of me, out on the side, out behind me. That's always the action of my hand. Now my bottom hand is along for the ride. So some of you guys might have seen this before. We use a toilet paper roll sometimes. My bottom hand, don't worry if you don't have it. I'm just demonstrating something here. Okay, but when I'm stick handling, I basically close my bottom hand. So see how we can slide up and down the stick? And I can move it around. Okay, I'm not twisting. My bottom hand at all and squish it my toilet paper roll. So when you guys go back and do this video on your own, okay, if you want to try it with a toilet paper roll, if you have a big butt end, okay, just cut a slice in the toilet paper roll to get over. Okay, but it just allows you to keep more control in through your top hand. And that's what you want. You want that action, the rolling of the wrist be mostly through the bottom or top hand and the bottom hand along for the right. Now Okay. We've all done camps with me before. You know we can't have this chicken wing. We cannot have our top hand glued to our hip. Right? This limits our ability to stick handle around our body. Okay, someone's throwing a message in here. Oh yeah, people are muting themselves. Good. Okay. Yeah, hang on, hey Kim, just one one second. I'm just gonna mute everyone and I'm gonna unmute you. I figured out I figured out how to do that. We're good? You can't tell me now. 
There you go. You're unmuted. Everyone else should be muted. Well done, boss. See, I'll be uh, getting you to help me out next week. All right. So <laughs> I only hear Kim. All right. So when we're talking about spacing, I always want your hands away. So you're going to hear me say hands out, hands away. That means you've always got this space, okay, between your glove and your body when you're stick handling. Okay. Even when I'm stick handling out on the side here, there's a lot of space. Okay. So when you're stick handling in front, okay, so I've got my stick out in front of me. Sorry for the glare. I'll fix that for my next video. My stick's out in front of me. Okay. I've got space. So the way to see that, okay, I don't have my stick stuck in my belly button like this, like a really bad belly button piercing. That would embarrass your parents. Okay. I've got my hands out away in front of me. Okay. And then you can see my wrist rolling. So I want everyone to try that, right? Bad belly button piercing. Drop that stick down in front, okay, and now roll that top hand. Okay, if you've got your ball, start stick handling your ball, okay, that's stick handling out in front of you. So again, now you can see if I go back here, I have my ball, okay. Now, what do I mean by dribbling, right? It's the same thing if you were dribbling in basketball, right? I don't know how many of you guys play basketball, but you can't just like pick up the ball and run down the court. That's traveling, right? So same idea here with dribbling in hockey. It's not a move. We're not working on some D here. We're working on managing the puck so that you can skate from point A to point B quickly, right? So just keeping it alive, kind of like you're stick handling a little A. You're not trying to hack it into a million pieces. You're just keeping it alive. That's what I mean when I'm talking about dribbling. Keep that, that ball alive. Keep that puck alive. Nice little touches by rolling that top hand. Okay, so spacing out in front, right? Bad belly button piercing. Okay, spacing out to the side. So now I've got the puck in my primary position here. So out on my forehand side, stick handling. So now you can see, look how much space between this glove and my body, guys. That's like, I can hold on to a real big pillow here, right? I'm not trying to squish and suffocate my pillow. So I've got this pillow here, okay? And if I have my imaginary ball out to the side, Look how much space I've got here. Okay, so I'll turn back forward. Now I call this primary position because it's the best position to do anything you want on the ice. From here, I can stick handle, I can pass, right? I can shoot, I can pass over here, I can move it over here, right? That's why it's so important to get rid of this chicken wing because now I'm really limited in how I move around my body. So we need that spacing. So again, let's grab our ball. Let's work on stick handling in primary position. So now my glove is rolling forward and back, or it looks a little bit more forward and back. So let's try it here. So roll your ball. Lots of space. So see here on me. Sorry again for the glitter. Roll and back, roll and back. Lots of space. Get it moving. Notice how the ball is over by my foot. It's not way over in front of me. It's not way behind me. Right? Forward and back, forward and back. Dribble that ball, roll that top wrist, light touches with the bottom hand. Nice. All right, now, the most challenging one, your back hand. Okay, so we're going to fix a couple problems here. Okay, the main problem, obviously, is the chicken wing. If I've got this chicken wing and I try to get on my back hand, this is about as far as I can go. And that's not really on my back hand. Okay, so that's the first problem we're going to fix, right, is that we can't have any chicken wings. Okay, the second problem we're going to fix is getting this space, getting the hand away. So what I want you guys to be able to see here, okay, and I'll turn around so you can see, okay, I want to get this puck on my back hand, okay, look where my top hand is, okay, back, this is fun, okay, it's back away from my body, okay, it's lots of space here, I haven't got it glued to my hip, okay, my hand is back away from me, okay, my hand is on my back hand, is way back away from me. Okay, so let's put the puck on our backhand side. Let's have a good bounce in our knees. You're gonna have to turn through your upper body. So see my shoulders turn here? Okay, my shoulders pointing towards you guys. Okay, now I'm gonna get this puck over on my backhand side and roll the wrist. Okay, let's go. Let's handle that ball. Roll the wrist. Go to back, go to back, go to back, go to back. Okay, keep going. All right, it should look like your top hand is sticking out of your back pocket. Okay, keep going. Stick hand up. Twist that body. Get that top hand out of your back pocket. 
Okay, so we're going to give each of these positions numbers. Right in front of you is position number one. Okay, your forehand. So again, I'm a righty. Doesn't matter though. Okay, For, or out on your forehand side is position two. Okay, out on your backhand side is position three. Those three positions here, guys. We're going to go from one to two to three. Okay, and I'm going to call them out. Okay, so I'm going to ditch my ball just so it doesn't get too loud in here for you. Okay, so let's start. Hands away, roll that wrist, soft in the bottom hand. Okay, eyes on me. Okay, position one, bring that ball back and forth. All right, let's go to position two, out on your forehand. So you're on your right if you're a righty. You're on the left if you're a lefty. Okay, I'm just moving my feet to get you guys in the picture here. Okay, three, out on the backhand. Roll, roll, roll. Bring that hand forward and back, forward and back. Roll, 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 roll. Okay, back to the middle. One, back to your backhand. Three, back to your forehand. Two, roll that wrist, roll that wrist. Back in front, one, and take a break. Okay, I'm cheating a bit. It's a little easier for me because right now, okay, I don't have a ball or my stick, but you guys get the idea. Now, most of you guys have worked with me before moving through those stations. Super easy. Okay, or at least, okay, it's not that challenging. So we're going to give you one more position, and that's number four. Okay, position number four is behind you. There's two ways you can get to position four. Okay, if I'm already in position two here on my forehand, okay, I can get to position four, okay, right behind my body here. So you guys can see my sticks kind of in between my feet. Okay, that's position four. So a lot of that is turning my upper body, okay, and my shoulders are parallel to my stick, so that ball's back behind me. So that's one way to get position four. Now, the hard way to get to position four is on your backhand. So you gotta twist all the way around, okay, and try to get that ball behind you. So I want everyone to try that, okay, with no ball or no puck for now. So let's get back into position four off our forehand. So you're from one to two, back to four. Okay, now you've got your ball or your imaginary ball behind you. Notice how my top hand is still nice and far away from my body. So get back into position four, guys. Okay, you don't have to have the ball. Just get comfortable there. Get a little bounce going in your legs. Okay, now let's try to get to position four the hard way. Your backhand way. You guys might be a little more flexible than me and be able to twist back there. But don't turn your feet. Okay, that defeats the purpose. Keep your toes pointing as much towards me or towards your... Uh, camera or phone is, or um, computer as you can. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get there on my backhand side. So I'm gonna twist, okay, and now I'm stick handling as far as I can, comfortably behind me, in position four. All right, so let's test ourselves a little bit here. Okay, we're gonna call out the different numbers. So if you're in two, and I call out four, just go right into four there. If you're in three, and I call out four, Go back behind you there, okay? So let's start off in one, okay? Again, I'm gonna ditch the ball here just to make it a little quieter. All right, so nice athletic position. Top hand away from your body, hands out, okay? Relax that bottom hand, we're gonna start in one. Okay, in three, two, one, go. Okay, we're in position one. Stick handle that ball, back and forth, back and forth, handle the ball. Okay, over to two. Handle that ball, forward and back, forward and back. Keep that top hand away. All right, let's go to four, guys. Don't worry if you lose the ball, okay? You might want to look back behind you. I'm not going to look because I don't have a ball right now. Okay, back to one. Bring that ball back up, up to one. All right, let's get it over to three, four to back. Keep that top hand away, roll that top wrist. All right, let's try to get the four. Try not to lose your ball here, guys. You might need to slow it down, that's okay. Get comfortable, back up to three. Backhand side, keep that hand out of your back pocket. Back up out in front of you. Back to one, over to two, back to one, and let's take a break. All right. Whew, I wasn't even stick handling, okay? So, everyone gets the idea there of changing to different positions, okay? There's actually six stations, so there's a different forward and back position on your forehand and your backhand, but we'll get there in a future video. Now, I wanna challenge you guys. Okay, might have been hard to do that twisting stuff here. 
Okay, we're gonna spend a couple more minutes to Kenley. Here's what I want you to do. I want to pretend that you now shoot the other way. Okay, so a little bit of challenge here. Get outside your comfort zone. All right, so normally I'm a righty. Now I'm gonna hold my stick as a lefty. This should be interesting. Okay, notice how I automatically go to chicken wing. So I'm not comfortable here. I'm not as comfortable here. And trust me, I can't like secretly shoot left-handed. I'm not one of those people. Okay, so don't just take your stick and put it on the other side. You actually have to switch your top hand. So again, my left hand's normally on top. I'm gonna put my right hand on top. It's fine that your stick's curved the wrong way. Don't worry about it, all right? So now we're gonna think about rolling this wrist, okay? Relaxing the bottom hand and we're gonna stick handle the wrong way or the way that we're not used to, okay? So wrong way stick handling here, guys. This is gonna be interesting, so roll that wrist. Okay, now automatically, your bottom hand's gonna wanna do all the work, okay? Your normal top hand, it's like, I can do this, okay? Don't let it do this. Let your top hand do the work. If you have that toilet paper roll, put it back on and don't let your hand squeeze it, your bottom hand squeeze it, all right? So let's try just one hand in here so we don't cheat, okay? Roll that wrist, get out of the glare here. Roll this wrist, roll, 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 roll. All right, let's put the other hand on. Keep that top hand doing the work, let's go. Triple that ball, wrong handed. Keep it moving, keep it moving. Get a little bounce in your knees. Get that ball moving, guys. Roll, roll, roll. Keep it moving. Should start to burn because you're not used to this. All right, let's go primary position on your long side. Forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Okay. Keep the handling. Oh, I lost the ball. Imaginary ball. Here I go. And rest. We're going to work on speed. Okay, mostly we're going to work on your east-west, so there's going to be a little bit of stride work, okay? But really, we're working on your stop and start. So we're working on generating as much power as possible and being able to put the brakes on and immediately go back the other way, right? So we talk about speed. There's usually two ways you see speed on the ice. I'll grab my stick here, okay? There's two ways we usually think about speed. There's like the little water bucks. You know, people skate, they like look like this. That's not me, by the way. I don't skate like that, okay? So they kind of do this and they look really fast, but they're kind of not going anywhere, okay? I'm the other kind of skater. I have this long, majestic stride and I move fast down the ice because I push so hard, but I look slow, okay? Both are good and bad for different reasons, okay? But there's a couple things that work there. One is how hard you push. That's how hard you push into the ground or into the ice. That's how you generate power. Okay, the flip side of that, okay, the water bug, okay, that's quickness. That's how fast you move your feet. We're going to work on both of those, okay? But the most important thing is, can you do it in a low balance position? And can you generate that power and speed and still be able to put the brakes on, right? I'm going to date myself there, but the parents will understand, right? And one of the Mighty Ducks, that kid from Miami, who skates really fast, but he can't stop and he just smashes himself into the boards. Right, because he has no brakes. We gotta make sure we have great brakes. So it's not, not good to generate a ton of power, a ton of speed, and not be able to stop it and go back the other way. So that's what we're gonna work on. So, hockey's a single leg sport, guys. Even goalies, I don't know if we have any goalies on the call, but you're only here like while you're waiting around and then you're pushing. That's my bad impersonation of goalie. Okay, so we're gonna work on our single leg balance. So when I ask you guys to balance on one leg, you're gonna hear me say knee to cap. Well, what the heck does that mean, Tim? Okay, so if I'm balancing on this one leg, see my knee here, the helpful white line? It's gonna touch my calf of my back leg. My back foot is not on the ground here, guys. Okay, so everyone try knee to calf. Okay, sit low, get your chest up. Okay, you should be able to hold this balance position all day. Okay, especially since we just came out of hockey season. Okay, let's switch legs so you guys can notice. Maybe you have one leg that's way better than the other, so again, Knee to calf, my back foot is up. Sit nice and low. Then hold that position. Be mindful, think, do I have one leg that's way better than the other? You guys can see my right leg is way worse than my left leg. Okay, but if you saw me here with two legs, so rest for a sec, this is like my hockey stride position. So think of some players, the player that pops into mind for me is Sidney Crosby. 
You never see him skate straight up like this. You guys know I'm an Ovechkin fan, but you never see Crosby up like this. Okay, he sits nice and low, and everything happens from this low balance position on one leg or the other leg. That's what I want you guys to think about, being in that low balance position. Okay, so you're gonna hold that low balance position here for 15 seconds. Okay, you guys can hold your stick, but I don't want you to put it on the ground because that's gonna obviously help your balance. So let's go left leg, knee to calf, chest up. Okay, and from here, we're gonna hold and you're gonna do your stick handling in your primary position. No ball. Okay, just roll that top wrist, get the imaginary ball going forward and back. Hold for five, four, three, two, and rest. All right, let's switch over to the other leg. Okay, so for me, that's the right leg here. Nice and low, knee to calf. Make sure the back foot isn't touching, and stick handle. Okay, puck in the primary position, roll that top hand. Okay, stay nice and low, knee to calf. If you lose your balance, just get right back into it. We're going to go for five, four, three, two, and one. All right, we're going to do this again, guys. Now, for some of you, Kim, that's easy. I can do that all day. Cool. Awesome. Okay, for some of you, you might have been doing like some airplane maneuvers to stay balanced. That's fine too, right? It's all about challenging yourself, okay, getting outside of your comfort zone a bit. So, here's another way to challenge yourself. We're gonna do that same thing, okay? We're gonna put our arms behind our back. So now you can't use your arms to help you balance, and you haven't got your stick. So again, we're gonna put our arms behind our back here, and go back on the left leg, okay? So knee to calf, ready and go. Now if you're here, guys, and this is still too easy, remember, I can't see most of you, I can't hear you, close your eyes, okay? Close your eyes and try to keep that balance. Don't worry if you fall out of it, okay? Sit nice and deep, knee to calf, for three, two, one, and rest. All right, back to the other leg. Okay, so again, knee to calf, make sure the back foot isn't touching, make sure we're keeping our chest up. Okay, I'm on my right leg here, knee, left knee to the calf, okay, hands behind, and let's hold. Again, if this is too easy, and you're feeling really rooted into the ground like a big strong tree, let's try closing our eyes. And like I told you before, my right leg's not so great. Closing my eyes. Oh, the like dance moves in my foot right now. Okay, let's go for three, two, one, and rest. All right, that one might have been a little bit more challenging for you guys. You guys jump in on one of the uh, future calls or uh, skills lessons, and we'll do way more challenging versions of that too as well. Now, I talked a little bit about generating power. So when we generate power, it's always from this low balance position, right? If I want to take a stride, if I want to body someone, if I'm going to stop and start, I'm in this low balance position, okay? But I've got to be able to absorb force and send it back out, okay? So I've got to be able to load and explode. And that's what I want to work on. Now, those of you who've done my camps, work with me off the ice, you've done this before. So, we're gonna work on ninja landings. I don't really know what a ninja looks like. I just watch cartoons with my kids. Okay, ninja landings. So a ninja doesn't make any noise. They land soft and quiet. Okay, so if I jump up, let's all try it. Let's jump up. Try to land nice and quietly. So this would not be a ninja here. Not a ninja landing. Okay, if you're working on carpet right now, lucky you, ninja landings will be a little easier, okay? Um, so let's try it here. The other thing to think about is I want you to think about when you land that you're taking the elevator down a little bit. Okay, you know, you push the button on the elevator and it kind of goes down. That's what we want to work on here. So as I jump up, you can see I just take the elevator down a little bit. I don't just smash into the ground. Okay, so try a couple on your own here, guys. Okay, jump up. Ninja with me. Okay, try a couple more up. Nice and soft. Listen to your feet. Keep going. Right? I want you to listen. Do you hear your feet smashing into the ground? Do you feel quiet? Do you feel controlled? Right? We have to be able to control our power here. Let's do a couple more. Jumping up. Soft landing on two feet. Okay, two more. Jump up. Ninja. Last one. Jump up. Ninja landing. All right. Grab water if you need it. Okay. We're gonna make this a little bit more challenging here. 
So now you're gonna do a two foot jump, two feet jump, one foot land. So it's gonna look exactly the same. You're not going anywhere. Well, this clear, like I feel like I'm in a Michael Jackson video. Anyone? Parents? Okay. I'm glad we're recording that. All right. So now you're gonna do two foot jump, one foot land. Try to get out of the glare here. Sorry, stick. Okay, so I'm gonna jump up on two and I'm gonna land on one. And you can see I'm in need of calf here. I'm kind of putting it all together. So jump on two, land on one. I told you guys my right leg's a little weaker. You can see that when I land. So let's try it. Try it at home. Jump up, soft ninja landing on one leg. Power up, load in. Okay, so explode up, control the landing. Explode up, control the landing. Keep going here. So explode, control the landing. Explode, control the landing. Explode, control the landing. Explode, control the landing. Now, I got you guys on mute, but I'm sure you're probably like me. You probably have one leg that's better than the other leg. Totally fine. No worries, okay? But that's what the off season's built for. We wanna try to make both legs even, right? I can't undo the fact you guys all shoot one way. So for me, my left leg is better, guys, because I shoot right. I'm constantly moving hard onto that left leg and balancing on that left leg. I don't do as much on my backhand to load up my right leg. That's why my left leg is stronger. I know that, it's years and years and years of loading that leg. So it makes sense that you guys are gonna be dominant one leg over the other, for sure, because it's a, it's not the most even sport in the world in terms of sidedness, okay? But now in the off season is the time to try to fix that. So we're gonna do another set here. Two foot jump, one foot land. And I want you to think about that leg that maybe isn't as strong and really focus on sinking down in that elevator, okay? And getting that soft ninja landing. All right, ready, two foot jump. Ready, and up, one foot land. Up, one foot land. Up, one foot land. Again, up, one foot landing. Keep going here, up, one foot land. Again, I'll show you from the side, up, one foot land. Up, one foot land. Let's do a couple more, up, one foot land. Up, one foot land. All right, not bad. I hope you guys were thinking a little bit about your two legs and how they're a little bit different. Okay, let's grab a sip of water here. All right, now we've worked on our balance. So being in that low balance position and we've worked on controlling our landings, which really is stopping, right? So we've worked on our starting position, knee to calf, and we've worked on our landing position, that ninja landing, that stopping, start and stop. And now we're gonna generate power and still try to think about starting and stopping. So now we're gonna be jumping side to side, okay? So let's watch here. Okay, the exercise is called a hide-in, named after a speed skater that probably only the old people like me know, okay? But what we're gonna focus on is being knee to calf, jumping across to the other leg, and getting knee to calf. So jump across, knee to calf, jump across, knee to calf. And what I really want you guys to focus on, so try it here with me, is controlling on one side. Okay, so we're gonna slow down the sides. So go with me here, and don't jump till I jump, guys. Jump, 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 control the landing, jump, quiet landing, control, one more each way, jump, and jump. All right, so again, if you have one leg that's stronger than the other, you're definitely gonna feel it in that exercise. Okay, on the weaker one, so you probably see me on my right leg, which is the one on this side. I kind of have like a wibble wobble. Okay, that's fine. Uh, obviously, I need to work on that. That's something I'll do with you guys in the off season here. Okay, but let's do another set now. Now, if that was way too easy, jump higher or jump further. But what we don't want is like a, like a dance move when you land. So what do I mean by a dance move? Okay, a dance move is when you land and you kind of like do that. Right, so that's really bad breaks. We don't wanna have bad breaks, we want perfect breaks. You want your breaks to work when you're skating down the ice a million miles an hour and you wanna stop and make a move the other way. 
If you have bad brakes, okay, change of direction becomes impossible. So let's make sure we have good brakes. Good power, better brakes. All right, let's start here again. Ready, knee to Explode. Okay, load that landing. Okay, load. Jump. 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 Load. And jump. Now, we do one more set of this, but what you guys can probably notice, I've done this exercise a good a million times in my life, okay? The position I land in, that I stop in, is also the position I start in, right? I don't land and then go down and then jump, right? I land and I jump from this position. I move across, I land in this position, and I jump from this position, right? There shouldn't be a lot of level changes up and down here. Let's do one more set, okay? Nice and low, ready, knee to cap, chest up, and load, jump, load, jump, load, jump, load, explode across, load, explode across, load, explode, 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 one more each way, explode, explode, and rest. Oh, this is so cool. I can see you guys like jumping on the side okay, as you guys go. That's awesome. All right, let's check in my time here. So we have about 15 more minutes. So now we're going to challenge our jumping a little bit more. Okay, we're going to do a one foot jump to a one foot land. Okay, and we're going to do that jumping in. So what do I mean? Okay, we're going to work on power. So when I take my stride, I'm going this way into my wall. Right, I push as hard I can off that knee to calf leg. So what I want us to do here is we're going to push off that leg, we're going to land on the same leg. So the exercise you were just doing was like the dance move version. Okay, we're not going to do that move version. You're going to jump from your right leg and land on your right leg. So it's going to look like this. Okay, watch that again. So I'm on my right leg and I'm going to land on that exact same leg. Watch the left. So here, I'm jumping this way, and I land on that same leg. Okay, and then you're gonna switch. Let's try it here. So jump, switch. Watch where I'm pointing, jump, switch. Oh, good balance, Ken. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. Jump. Jump. Switch, jump, switch, jump, switch, jump, and rest. All right, so hopefully the pointing there kind of helps. We're gonna do that one again. Now again, that felt super easy, or maybe you felt really balanced on both legs. Let's go further. Challenge yourself, jump higher, jump further up. But again, no dance moves, right? We don't be landing and doing this. Okay, let's go again here. Start jumping in, so watch where I'm pointing. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. Soft ninja landings, jump, switch. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. Jump, switch. One more each way, jump, switch, jump, and switch. All right, guys, great work. Okay, we're gonna move on to quick feet here. So grab some water. All right, so this might be like something you're doing with your team as agility ladder, okay? We're gonna do quick feet drills. Obviously don't have my ladder. You might not have one either, totally fine. What I want you to think about here, the ground is on fire. Okay, you want to be quick and light on your feet. So if the ground was actually on fire, you wouldn't be like, ah. Okay, that's slow and loud. Okay, you want to be quiet and quick. So more like that. So everybody try that here. We're gonna try, I call it quick fire. 
right? Let's try a little foot fire to get the knees bent, chest up, ready? And go. Nice and quiet though. Let's pick up the feet a little bit. Quick, 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 and rest. All right, so we're gonna do a simple ladder drill in and out. Feet wide, you're gonna bring them in and back out. It's gonna look like this. And I want your head not to bob up and down. Ready, stay low. And go for about six seconds, so nice and fast, as fast as you can. Ready, and go. And rest. And not to get a little burn, but not enough to get tired. We're gonna try that again. So again, I don't want you guys going, we don't wanna be changing levels in the upper body. So when you're doing agility, like ladder stuff, think of yourself like a duck. Okay, you know when you watch a duck go across the water, they look like this. Okay, you know their legs are going like this underneath the water as they're going. Same idea here. When you're doing quick feet, you want your upper body to be the top of the duck. You want your legs to be the crazy duck legs under the water. So let's try this one again, in and out. Duck legs here, duck body nice and quiet here. Ready, set, and go. Relax your arms. And rest, okay? Hopefully you guys can see yourself in your uh, picture in picture, okay? Get an idea of how your upper body is. All right, we're gonna switch it up here, okay? Now we're gonna go in, in, out, out. So, both feet are out, you're gonna go in, in, out, out. Sometimes it helps to say it out loud or in your head parts. In, in, out, out. So imagine there's an imaginary line dropping right in the middle line of your body. In, in, out, out. Just get the rhythm here. Okay, so my legs are going out and coming in. I'm not I'm trying to move my upper body too, too much. All right, we're gonna go fast here for six seconds. Okay, ready? Feet out. Say in and out, out to yourself. Quiet duck upper half. Crazy duck legs underneath. Ready and go. Come on, guys, keep going. And rest. I wish I was watching Coach Andrew do this right now in his jeans. Okay, let's do it again. All right, parents hang in there. You're doing great. Okay, oh, there he is. Thanks, Coach. Here we go. If I'm, if I'm doing it, you're doing it. We're gonna go one more time. In and out, out, ready. Quiet upper body, crazy duck legs. Ready, set, go. Get those legs moving, guys. Come on, quick. Quick. And rest. All right, these are too easy for you guys. So. You do hopscotch. Two out, one in. Two out, one in. Okay, just like you would do hopscotch at the park. You're not allowed to go to right now. Okay. Now it's easy in hopscotch to get up way high. So you just watch me here. Quiet, duck upper body. Okay, you don't want to be doing this. Okay. Ready? Be wide. Don't worry if you screw it up. I'll probably screw it up. Right in front of you here. It's okay. I'm okay with it. Ready? Set and go. Weird watching yourself do this. And stop. As soon as I watch myself in the camera, it kind of gets a little messy. Try the same thing again. Okay, think about your levels. Quiet duck upper body, crazy duck legs. And let's try to get a little faster. Get outside your comfort zone. You ready? Quiet, crazy. Quiet, crazy. And go. All right, not bad, not bad. Okay, last exercise we're gonna do. Some of you guys might do this with your teams as a warm-up drill. Foot fire, okay? Here, when I say left, you're gonna turn your whole body without jump, get back to the middle. When I say right, left, right. All right, you guys got it? Now, my right and your right are different, but don't worry about it. If you're following along at home, just get it done. Okay, ready, quick fire. On your marks, good set, go. Left, left, right, right, left. And rest. Woo. Okay? You can do that same thing again. Pretty easy. Good pattern, right? Remember, when you turn, okay, it's just a jump. 
So I'm hit and back. It's just a hit. You're not doing this to turn. Okay? Just hit and go. Let's try that one more time. Ready? Okay, and go. Right. Right. Left. Right. Left. Left. Right. And rest. Okay. Last challenge here. We're going to add up and down. So if I say up, it's up. If I say down, down. It's the light here. Down. All right, you guys ready? My heart rate is hot. It is good. All right, ready? Foot fire. And go. Right, down. Up, left. Right, up, down. Left, right, down. And rest. Woo! Not bad. Okay, we do one more. And then we're going to slow it down here for our last couple minutes. Okay, get outside your comfort zone. If you're messing up and go the wrong way, let it roll off your back like a duck. Get right back into it. All right, mistakes aren't important right here. Okay, we're just challenging ourselves to get outside our comfort zone. Are we ready? All right, foot fire in three, two, one, go. Right, up, down, left, left, up, up, right, left, down, left, right, and rest. All right, grab water, guys. My my clock. We got five minutes left. Perfect timing. All right. So that gives you guys an idea. Just a quick little workout. Now what we're gonna do? I'm gonna stop breathing hard. Okay. So we're gonna work on our cool down. So we're gonna do some yoga moves. Now some of you like you can hear yoga and you're like, because ah! you're not so great at it. Trust me. If you can watch some of my junior players do yoga. You would feel a lot better about yourself. Some of you might be like, yeah, yoga, I do that all the time at home. Awesome. Okay, what I want you guys to think about, talking about our mental game, is how you approach this. Whether you think you're great at it or not so great at it, I want you to have control of something. And that's your breathing, which is ironic when I'm breathing hard. So, what I want you guys to think about is doing four up, four down breathing. So, let's try it here, kind of like a yoga move. So, I want you to take your hands and lace them together. You gotta take your gloves off if you had them on. Okay, you're gonna push them down. Okay, so when I say in, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, and then out. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna do it on the ground so you can see a bit better. So we're here. In, breathe in for four, two, three, four. So hold on. In, out, two, Four. Keep going here. Breathing in as we go up. That looks awesome. Like you. Two, three, four. Prayer hands. Two, three, four. Keep going here. So breathing in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And breathe out. Try to breathe at the same pace as your hands. One, two, three, four, and out. Two, three, four. Okay, we're in a couple of yoga poses here, and I want you to think about that breathing. So if yoga makes you go, right, think about controlling your breathing and doing the best you can with the pose. If yoga's like, yeah, I got this, this is easy, then really focus on your breathing. Your breathing should be perfect. So I'm going to do a basic crescent lunge. So I'm going to show you two ways here. So my feet are about shoulder width, hip width. I'm going to step back into a lunge. So you can see here, sorry, my feet aren't stacked one on top of each other. They're not wide out. So they're comfortable hip width apart. I'll show you a little bit on an angle here. Okay. So I want you to think about bending as deep as you feel comfortable through the front leg. Try to have three points of contact. So your big toe, your baby toe, and your heel. Are rooted deep into the ground, kind of like you're a big old tree. This is your main balancing leg. So this is your tree rooted into the ground. Okay, you're up on your back toe. Okay, just get comfortable here. If that's enough for you, hang out here and think about that four up, four down breathing. If that's too easy, get those arms up. 
Okay, and we're gonna stay in that position here. Okay, I'm not a yoga master. I've been doing yoga a long time, watching people on the video like you're doing who look way better than this. Okay, half of it we're working on physical. I think a lot of it we're working on mental and our breathing here. So if yours looks way better, then good job. If you're like me, to stay with it and don't think more about the mental side of it. Okay, let's switch legs here. So right leg in front or left if you were doing the right leg there. Okay, make sure again, feet are hip width, not way wide, not stacked. So I'll show you here this time. Okay, root it down into those three points in your front foot. Okay, drop your back knee down, shoulders over hips, arms straight up if you feel comfortable. If not, you can have them down on your hips. And really let's focus here guys. When we breathe out, the four down, Think about rooting more into the ground. So we breathe up, and then down into those three points in your front foot. Really get rooted down into the ground there. Okay, one more breath. And release. All right, we got one more exercise, and then we're gonna call it a night. We're gonna do a twisted crescent pose here. So, you're gonna go to prayer twist. So, left leg back in front. You're going to take your right elbow and bring it across. So now it's on top of your left knee. So you're in the exact same position with your legs that we were just in. But now you're going to bring your elbow across, okay, and twist it. Bring your other hand on top, okay, in the prayer position. So now you can see my elbows are kind of straight up and down. Okay, I've opened up my chest. And I'm looking to my left because I have my left leg in front. If your right leg is in front, you're looking to your right. Okay, keep that root. Those three points rooted in through your front foot. If you fall out of it, no worries. Just get back into it. If this is too easy, let's think about our breathing. Another way to make it more challenging is to close your eyes. Okay, let's do another breath here. And let's switch sides. I am sweating. I don't know if you can see that. I feel good about that. Okay, so we're back into our regular crescent pose here. Okay, so now I've got my right leg in front. Move my left elbow across. I'm in the prayer position here. My elbows are stacked. Okay, this side of my ribs is a lot tighter. Okay, so looking over to your right. Okay, rooting down into your foot. So remember, when you breathe out, think about four breaths down into that rooted foot. Okay, so we're breathing into the position. Have an awareness of your breath. Right? And this is really mental training, guys. When you focus on your breathing, you control something you can control instead of worrying about stuff you can't control. Okay? And that's part of the mental game. And release. Okay? So, again, I know it's stressful times. Right? If you feel anxious ever, anything about hockey, about life, about school, lots of schools going online now. Right? Try to think about that four up, four down breathing. I use it in the morning. Okay, for a couple minutes just to get myself focused or whether I'm feeling stressed out during the day with my three young kids running around while I'm trying to get work done. Okay, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed it. That was an hour. Okay, um, good workout. I know I'm sweating. Probably didn't need to wear my hoodie during it. Um, but I hope you guys liked it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit it a bit and I'm going to throw it up online and then I'll uh, send everybody out the link or if you don't get it from me in the next day, just shoot me an email. Okay, and I'll send it out to you so that it'll be on my total female hockey website somewhere. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, and uh, I'm doing a whole camp of it next week. So it'll be an hour at this time, every day after school. Different stuff every day, shooting, stick handling, some more yoga. There'll be some trivia. There'll be prizes. For those of you who've done my total female hockey camps in the past, there's always prizes at the end of the day. So we'll make sure we have prizes at the end of the hour. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you keep working hard and dreaming big. Uh, there'll be more of this stuff coming your way over the next little while. 